Hi, my name is Samantha Sanders. For the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk to you about what I do as an engineer, how I became an engineer, and some tips and tricks on what to do if this sounds interesting to you. So let's hop in. Starting with a short intro about me. I'm 24 years old, work as a systems engineer for BAE Systems and the Electronic Systems Division, originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and have been in Cedar Rapids for about three years. At BAE Systems, we create products and services for air, land, sea, space, as well as our advanced electronics, intelligence, security, and IT solutions and support services. Our employees work on the world's most advanced electronics, from saving emissions in the City of Light, to powering the Mars rover, to protecting the F-35 fighter jet. BAE Systems has over 85,000 employees, with operations in over 40 countries, with over 100 locations just in the United States. BAE's mission statement is we protect those who protect us. This mission statement is important to me because it encapsulates the purpose of my job. It's more than just showing up at work and putting in the hours. The, pro the products we work on protect those who risk their lives to protect our country. They rely on the work we do in order to have a successful mission and return home safely. I'm surrounded by people who strive to create excellent products and take pride in their work, which makes BAE Systems a great place to be. The BAE Systems location in Cedar Rapids is part of the Navigation and Sensor Solutions Division. The Cedar Rapids location is one of the world's leaders in military GPS systems producing numerous ground and weapons receivers. So how does GPS receivers work? The United States GPS system currently has around 30 operational satellites that orbit 12,550 miles above the Earth. That is equivalent to driving across the United States four times. The satellites are broadcasting radio signals that GPS receivers listen to and solve for position, time, and satellite distance. The GPS time can be accurate to within as little as 35 nanoseconds. To put that into perspective, blinking takes on average 400 million nanoseconds. Position can be determined to an accuracy of less than seven feet, and some receivers can be used on platforms that are hypersonic, which is faster than 15,000 miles per hour. The Sea Rabbit's location is working on developing and producing multiple products. One of those products is the MPEM. This is meant to be handled via a handheld vehicle or low dynamic aircraft application. It can handle roughly up to 560 miles per hour. And Navstrike M delivers mission success in a small cost-effective package with high accuracy and reliability under high dynamics. And the Sabre Y is designed to provide accurate position, velocity, altitude and time data in extremely high threat environments where GPS is denied or degraded by adversaries. It can operate in temperatures of negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 176. So what is a system engineer? As a system engineer, I have handled the entire program life cycle. We work closely with customers to make their needs a reality and create a, fi a quality final product. Areas I'm main involved in is test development and execution to get bugging performance issues and requirement tracing. Just recently, I wrapped up the Navtrack M program, which enabled it to start transition to factory in order for a final product to be built and shipped to our customers. We also do some offsite test events where I got the opportunity to travel to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio to complete customer testing on their equipment to evaluate our performance. These are some pictures from the Air Force Base Museum I visited while in Ohio. That middle picture is of the Wright 1909 military flyer, which is the first military heavier than air flying machine. So some challenges in engineering, especially as a system engineer, is military GPS timeline. We have customer contracts that get billed before engineering work starts. These contracts come with a schedule, budget, and deadline. And sometimes to meet deadlines, extra, worry, extra hours and effort are required, working extra days to ensure tests are running and accurate data is being collected, 
and instances of going above and beyond. I enjoy what I do and take a lot of pride in what my work my team does, which helps overcoming these challenges. It's very gratifying to see everyone's hard work come together to make a successful project. So shifting gears, how did I get started in engineering? Growing up, I did a lot of activities outside of school. Some of these include acapella, music, gymnastics, basketball, soccer, lacrosse, swimming, volleyball, Girl Scouts, and the list can go on and on. I think it's important to try a lot of activities while growing up and throughout your whole life in order to find what you're passionate about, excel at, and even what you don't enjoy doing. All of this can transfer into what areas you prefer pursue as a career and what you have as hobbies outside of work. I was the person who never knew exactly when, what to answer when people asked the question, what do you wanna be when you grow up? When I was in elementary school, the answer was astronaut, singer, or actress. Middle school, the answer became archeologist, author, or teacher. And whenever I was in high school, the answer was architect, makeup artist, or marine biologist. Engineering never made that list as a thought or answer for me until it was senior year of high school. So how did I end up as an engineer? I've always had an interest in math and science, but can never figure out how to best apply that to a choice of major or career. It took visiting West Virginia University to really cement the choice of industrial engineering. While on the college tour, one of the students, students showing me around talked about their summer internship. She had worked with an engineering consultant company, traveled to different cities with a team to different customer locations, taking various performance statistics, designing improvements, and traveling on to the next work site. And after that tour, that was the no turning back moment. Getting told that there was a field that had positions where I could travel, work with people, solve complex problems, and design creative solutions, that's what I needed to hear in that moment. So I attended Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, studying industrial and systems engineering, where I absolutely knew I made the right choice when I went to a conference in Atlanta, Georgia on supply chain management and got to see real world applications of industry solutions that we were learning about in class. One example is on the video here, and these are inventory robots which pick customer orders and deliver them for packaging and shipment. So that's a bit about how I got into engineering. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, what can you do? One of the first things would be to continue learning. No matter what field you pursue, even if that's not engineering, you have to continue learning to grow. It doesn't end once you leave school. Try to get involved and pursue opportunities. Try out different activities, find out what interests you and what you might think that might be something that's interesting to do with a job versus just a hobby and practice public speaking. It took someone explicitly telling me that people are not just born public speakers. To understand that it's a skill and it requires practice to make progress. One of the greatest challenges I see for those who are interested in going into engineering, the world and especially technology is not going to slow down. There is going to be more and more to learn as things become more advanced. Creative and complex solutions need to be designed. We get to do great things, but we have to keep learning and improving. But that is also an exciting thing. There's going to be amazing advancements for your generation to come up with to help the world be better. And I can't wait to see them. Sea Rapids has a lot of opportunities, especially with a lot of things going remote. There are a lot of online opportunities. Many of the local libraries, colleges, and organizations hold events related to STEM. There is a subscription service called KiwiCo, which offers STEM subscription boxes with interesting projects that introduce concepts of engineering. There is also so much content online to watch in order to learn more. A lot of streaming services have numerous documentaries on STEM topics. YouTube also has a lot of content creators that produce great STEM content in interesting ways. Some of my favorite would be Mark Rober, who was a previous NASA engineer with videos including a squirrel maze and a rocket powered golf club. Mumbo Jumbo does Minecraft redstone videos. And the interesting thing with that is that it works a lot like engineering in circuits. TEDx talk, 
They bring in people with all sorts of fields and backgrounds to talk about what they work on and practical engineering. Some simple explanations, the engineering feats around us and the hows and whys behind them. At BAE Systems, our differences make us stronger. Our diverse skills and abilities and perspectives improve our performance and our culture. It will take all of us working together to solve the problems of the future. Today's challenges are too big and too complex to be solved alone. They require people with different backgrounds and expertise coming together with a common goal. My advice to you is not to, to focus on finding the problems that you want to solve, but also find the people that you want to solve them with. Let's keep pushing the limit of what is possible. Thanks for joining and watching this video. If you have any questions, you can email me at samantha.sanders at baesystems.com.